Holy Baptism by Water and the Spirit Video 5 out of 11 Chapter 4 Church Where God and Humans Collide Initiate Induct And Incorporate Baptism Makes You In Corpus means body, as in corpse. Baptism incorporates us. It makes us the church. We are the body of Christ, Corpus Christi. Incorporate literally means to be formed into one body. The way Christ transforms the world is to collect his people to increase his body on earth. The Apostle Paul compares the church as a body with many parts. Baptism as an incorporating ceremony reminds us that our individual identity is united to our group identity. We become like paper mache soaked by water and stuck to the body of the piñata. We are no longer individuals, but a part of the corporate whole. Social clubs and fraternities and sororities and other organizations utilize a variety of rituals to induct members into their group. God gave us sacraments to induct or incorporate us into God's inner family. This family is not one based on privilege or honor, but of service and devotion. Please pause this video to reflect more on question 35. Private Community We are united with Christ, but we are also united with all who are also in Him too. The body of believers is a corporate unity, not a conglomeration of individuals. Indeed, our identity means little when apart from our network of relationships. Christians have no solid identity apart from community. This does not mean that Christianity is not personal. It is always personal, but never individualistic or private. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, once said, There is no private religion, but social religion. No individual holiness, but social holiness. Baptism binds us together. This is why it is called a covenant. The journey of the Christian becomes less about how much we can do or handle, and more about the whom in which we find power and whose body in which we find strength. We are not out to prove ourselves worthy, but to be connected to the one who is worthy. Don't just strive to imitate Jesus. Be in him, and baptism makes you in. Pause this video to reflect more on question 36. The church and the church. You may have noticed that the word church with a little c and church with a big c have been both used throughout this study. This is intentional. When we are talking about the local organization, which is located on a specific street in a specific town, we use the lowercase church. This is what most people think of when they think of church. Individual church buildings marked by the brand name and logo. Inside are the people who have gathered there because they like this local expression and have chosen their children to be baptized there so that they can be little Lutherans too. On the other hand, when we are talking about Christianity as a whole, including all the denominations and traditions around the world, we use the uppercase church with a big C. 
This church includes all our brick-and-mortar churches and our denominational structures, but also includes that part of the church that we cannot see easily. Followers being faithful both inside and outside the church building on Sundays and the weekdays. This is what we mean by the body of Christ, the mystical union of all Christ's faithful followers in this spiritual family with Jesus as our head. Some may lean toward the former understanding, with baptism being the entrance into local church membership and as a sign of affiliation with the denomination. Others may lean toward the latter understanding, with baptism being the mystical link to Jesus Christ himself, perhaps even saying, me and my Jesus. For them, it might be totally unrelated to the local church and its membership roles. It is when these two understandings come together that we get the best picture of the connection between the little C church and the big C church. Being a child of Christ and being part of his family. Let us draw a comparison to marriage. There is the legal side of marriage and the religious side. Sometimes people, for a variety of reasons, choose to get married in the eyes of the law only, which usually entails going to the county clerk's office and skipping the ceremony. Others might choose to get married in the eyes of God alone and skip the signing of the marriage license, but have a ceremony by an ordained minister inside a church. Both options raise serious questions, well, the second more than the first. Likewise, some people will desire to get baptized without all that fuss about denominational affiliation and church membership. They may say, I just want to get right with God. I don't actually want to be a member of the church or be considered a Presbyterian, as if baptism and membership are completely incompatible. Let's set the record straight. The church comprises of three levels. Number one, the mystical universal body of Christ. Number two, the denomination. And number three, the local church. Baptism is understood to relate to all three. In the United Methodist Church, like most traditions, you cannot separate these parts out. Membership and baptism are fused together. The top universal level might represent to us the most spiritual level, but membership on the denominational and local church levels will be where practical accountability and ongoing discipleship help us to grow and sustain faith in Christ. It is on these bottom levels that the rubber meets the road. It's the location where your faith is actually lived out. Do not dismiss what it means to be a member of a denomination. The endeavors of a denomination, through its own members like you, is where we can make real social change on the global scale. This is question 37 and question 38. Local churches keep a list of its members on membership roles. It's how we keep track of and hold each person accountable for their own spiritual growth and witness to the mission of Christ. The baptismal covenant is not just related between me and my Jesus, but also between me and Jesus' family. Membership roles are not a sign of privilege, but symbols of baptismal responsibility. The church, a covenant community. We will not understand the true nature of the Christian faith so long as we keep assuming that the church is just a disposable society of like-minded individuals who decided to gather together to pursue common religious concerns. The church is, instead, a community called into being at God's initiative. While there are thousands upon thousands of denominations and factions, together they make up the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. 
which reaches into every age and into every corner of our world. Locally, globally, and historically, the Church, in whatever style or form, is the creation of the mind and heart of God, even as it is led by imperfect human leaders. And if you have been called to baptism, it only is because God has called you to join this family. The Church, Guardian of Scripture and Tradition Here's a radical statement to chew on. There is no faith outside the church. Nope. There is no love, no joy, no hope, no peace outside this mystical community. Without the church, those who desire life in God have no means to receive any of this or even realize they have a desire for it in the first place. To those who have been brought up on rugged individualism, this will appear to be extreme. Without the early community of Israel, we would not have had prophets nor teachers, scriptures nor liturgical worship. Without the Jews, there could not have been a New Testament church. Without the church, none of us would be living in Christ today, for our faith is dependent upon scripture and tradition together. It is God, through God's people, who made these possible for our sake. Scripture is that library of books and letters written, transmitted, translated, and interpreted over centuries, all within communities of faith. We only have Scripture today because the Jews and Christians before us have revered and passed it on for us to have today. Our Bible would not have existed without the church, and it would not continue to be the best-selling book in the world. It would have been lost to history long ago. Tradition is also dependent upon the community. Without the church, there would have been no global councils to define doctrine, no passing on collections of hymns and prayers, no continuity in preaching, teaching, and ethical inquiry and practice. Together, we are the guardians of scripture and tradition the historic witness of God's love through Jesus Christ. Let us now return to that bold statement, there is no faith outside the church. Those who trust in God only came to it by being raised within the church family. Even if we rebelled against the church for a time or barely grasped the faith until late in life, even those of us who have had no early involvement with the congregation and came to faith in our later years, perhaps read something inspirational or experienced the witness of friends or neighbors. Nevertheless, even we have received the gospel because of a community of faith. Some of us have never stepped foot inside a church building, but have come to faith through a home gathering, a fellowship group, or the church's online presence. Some of us have never read the Bible, but are inspired by a Christian author. Whether by our Sunday worship, our publications, our social media presence, or our ministry in the world from day to day, the church is the primary way faith comes to all people. The church cannot be defined by buildings or potlucks or list of names in a book. The church will find itself sometimes in session, a couple of hours a week, but most often the church is deployed out into its mission field. The church is more often than not a scattered people in the world, and thus can take on many forms. Our ability to pinpoint where the scattered church may be can only be hinted at by the fruit of faith which God leaves in our wake. Wherever the baptized go, the church goes, and their faith can be found. Therefore, all faith is from God, seeping out through Christ's church, through the spread of the people. There is no faith outside the church.
the church, God's creation and gift. Jesus not only preached, taught, and healed, he also formed a community by gathering disciples. He brought together the most unlikely of people and made them a family. No one can claim to be in Christ without also being in the body of Christ. Transformation and liberation comes to us communally. It is God working through the entire body of the Son. Within the church, we discover who we are. And we discover we are not just an individual. We are a gift to the collective whole, a communal gift. We become a part of the whole, the God family. Our gifts work together to make our congregation one big gift. Think about our families. There are parents and perhaps other siblings who live with us inside the home, but there are also those in our extended families, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Like both our household and extended families, so it is in the family of Christ. The household is our congregation, the people with whom we live together. This is essential to our life in Christ. Yet we cannot stop there. There is also the extended community referred to as the one, holy, catholic, or universal, and apostolic church. This extended family includes congregations of every denomination, both Protestant and Catholic, as well as the entire company of believers in every age. We call this the communion of saints, and it transcends distance and time. Some traditions call the current church on earth the church triumphant. And those faithful people who are dead and now living with Jesus as the church triumphant. Through baptism, we become brothers and sisters of Peter and James and John, of Mary and Martha and Lazarus of Bethany, of Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, of Ambrose, of Monica and her son Augustine, of Francis of Assisi and Claire, his disciple, of Luther and Calvin, of Susanna and Samuel Wesley and their sons John and Charles, of Pope John the Twenty-Third, and Pope John Paul I, and Pope Francis, and of an almost infinite host of others whose names have been forgotten by us, but not by God. The richness and insight and devotion we can draw upon within this extended family is indispensable as we seek to be the faithful followers of Christ. It is from within this community of the covenant that we respond to God. Please answer questions 44 and 45 before moving on to chapter 5.